Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say a customary blessing. Blessed are thou, Adonai, the new king of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai, Allah, you have seen the words of your Torah in our mouths and our mouths of all your people of Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of every people of the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Bless you, Adonai, and teach its Torah to his people of Israel. Bless you, Adonai, Eleni, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Bless you, Adonai, give her the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence your light and may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. <coughs> this video is going to be a little different because my recording software went out. Exodus 30, 11 through 34, 35, Yahweh said to Moses, When you take the census of the people, then each shall give a ransom for his life to Yahweh. When you number them, there, that there may be no plague among them, and when you, when you number them, each one who is numbered in the census shall give half a shekel according to the shekel of sanctuary. The shekel is twenty geras. Half a shekel is an offering to Yahweh. Everyone who is numbered in the census from Twenty years old and upward shall give Yahweh's offering. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than the half shekel. When you give Yahweh's offering to make atonement for your lives, you shall take the atonement money from the people of Israel, and shall give it to the service of the tent of meeting, that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before Yahweh, so as to make atonement for your lives. Yahweh said to Moses, You shall also make a basin of bronze. With its stands of bronze for washing, and you shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it, with which Aaron and his son shall wash their feet in their hands when they go into the tent of meeting or when they come near the altar to minister to burn a food offering to Yahweh, they shall wash with water so that they may not die. They shall wash their hands and their feet so that they may not die. It shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his offspring throughout their generations. Yahweh said to Moses, Take the finest spices of liquid mirror, 500 shekels, and of sweet-smelling cinnamon, and half of much, that is 250, and 250 of aromatic cane, and 500 of cacassia. Sorry, cassia, yeah. According to the shekel of sanctuary, and a hand of olive oil, and you shall make of these a sacred anointing oil blended by the per perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it you shall anoint the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the table and all its utensils, the lampstand and its utensils, the altar of incense and the altar of burning offerings with all its utensils, and the basin and its stand. You shall consecrate them, that they may be made that, that they may be most holy. Whoever whatever touches them will become holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may be that they may serve me as priests, and you shall say to the people of Israel, This shall be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations, it shall not be poured on the body of an ordinary person, and you shall make no other like it in comparison in composition, sorry. It is holy and it shall be holy to you whoever compo compounds any like it or whoever puts any of it on an outsider shall be cut off from his people. Yahweh said the Moses take sweet spices stacked anika and galbanum sweet spices with pure frankincense of each shall be an equal part and make incense blended as the perfumer seasoned with salt pure and holy you shall beat some of it very small and put part of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting where i shall meet with you and it shall be most holy for you and the incense that you shall make according to its composition you shall not make for yourselves it shall be holy it shall be for you holy to Yahweh. Whoever makes any like it to use as perfume shall be cut off from his people. <coughs> Excuse me. Yahweh said to Moses, See, I have called by the name of Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hira, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and of craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, and cutting stones for settings and in carving wood to work in every craft and behold I have appointed with him Aholiab the son of Ahishamach of the tribe of Dan and I have given to you able men to all able men ability that they may 
that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting and the ark of testimony and the mercy seat that is on it, and all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its utensils, the pure lampstand and with all its utensils, and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offerings with all its utensils, and the basin and its stand. And finally, work garments, the holy garments, for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons, for their service as priests, and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. And Yahweh said to Moses, You are to speak to the people of Israel, say, Above all you shall keep my Sabbaths. This is a sign between me and you, you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, Yahweh, sanctified you. <coughs> sanctify you, and shall keep the Sabbath, because it is holy for you. Anyone, who, Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work on that, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to Yahweh. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath shall be put to death. Therefore, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave Moses... When he had finished speaking with him on the Mount Sinai, the two t tablets of testimony, tablets of stone written on by, with the finger of Elohim. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves to Aaron and said to him, Make us up, make us gods, who shall go before us? For this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me, so that all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he, he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a, a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to Yahweh, and they rose up early the next day and burnt offerings and off and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat, drink, and rose up to play. Yahweh said to Moses, Go down, for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I have commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf, and have worshipped it, and sanctified it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And Yahweh said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a sift necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, in order that I may make a great nation of you. But Moses implored Yahweh his Elohim, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent, did he bring them out to kill in the mountains, and consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. Remember Abraham and Isaac and Israel, your servants, to whom you have sworn, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and all this land I have promised, I will give to your offspring and they shall inherit it forever. And Yahweh relented from the disaster that he spoke on of bringing on his people. Moses turned and went down from the mountain with his two tablets of testimony in his hand, the tablets that were written on both sides, and on, on the front and on the back they were written. The tablets were the work of Elohim, and the writing was the writing of Elohim engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise from the people and they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp, but he said, It is not the shouting the sound of shouting for victory, or the sound of cry of defeat, but the sound of singing that I hear. And as soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and dancing, Moses' anger burned hot, and he threw the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made and burned it with fire and ground it to powder and scattered it on the water and made the people drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought such a sin, a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord burn hot. You know the people, they are set on evil. For they said to me, Make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So I said to them, Let any who have gold take it off. 
so that they gave so they gave it to me and I threw it into the fire and out came this calf. And when Moses saw that the people had broken loose, for Aaron had let them break loose to the derision of their enemies. Then Moses stood at the gate of the camp and said, Who is on Yahweh's side? Come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered around him, and they said to him, Thus says Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, Put your sword on the side of each of you. Go to and fro from gate to gate throughout the camp, and each of you kill his brother and his companion and his, and his neighbor. And the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And that day about three thousand men of the people fell. And Moses said, Today you have been ordained for the service of Yahweh, each one at the cost of his son and of his brother, so that he might bestow a blessing upon you this day. The next day Moses said to the people, You have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to Yahweh. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sins. So you, Moses returned to Yahweh and said, Alas, the people, this people has sinned a great sin. They have made for themselves gods of gold. But now I will forgive their sin. But if not, please blot me out of the book that you have written. But Yahweh said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. But now go, lead the people to the place about which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I'm a, I, will, I will visit their sin upon them. Then Yahweh sent a plague on the people because they made the calf the one that Aaron made. Yahweh said to Moses, Depart, go up from here. You and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, saying to your offspring, I will give it. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hivites, sorry, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. When the people heard this disastrous word, they mourned and not no one put on his ornaments. For Yahweh said to Moses, Say to the people of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. For if a single moment I should go among you, I would consume you. So now take off your ornaments, that I may know what to do with you. Therefore the people of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used the tent and pitched it outside the camp, far off from the camp. And he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought Yahweh would go out to the tent of meeting, which was on the outside of the camp whenever Moses went out to the tent. All the people would rise up, and each would stand at his tent door, and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and Yahweh would, spoke, would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship each other at his tent door. Thus Yahweh and worship each at his tent door. Sorry. Thus Yahweh used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned against, turned again in to the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. Moses said to Yahweh, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and uh, you have found favor in my sight now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways, that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider, too, this is a nation is your people. And he said, my, pre my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not... And you are going with us, so that we are distinct, and I, in your people, from every other people on the face of the earth. And Yahweh said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken I will do, for you have done, you have found favor in my sight. And I know by you, know you by name. Moses said, Please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim before you my name, Yahweh. And I will be gracious to whom? I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for a man shall not see me live. And Yahweh said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall never be seen. 
Yahweh said to Moses, Cut for yourself two tablets of stone like the first snow, write on the tablets. The words that were written on the first tablets which you broke, Be ready by the morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you, and let no one be seen throughout all the mountain. Let no flocks or herds graze opposite that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the first, and he rose early in the morning, and went up on Mount Sinai. Uh, and Yahweh, as Yahweh had commanded him, and took in his hands two tablets of stone, Yahweh descended in a cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of Yahweh. Yahweh passed before him and proclaimed Yahweh, Yahweh, Elohim, merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, favoring and oh, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. But who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generations? And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped, and he said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. And he said, Behold, I am making a covenant. Before all your people I will do marvels such as not have been created in all the earth or any nation. <coughs> Excuse me. And all the people among whom you have, you are, whom you are shall see the work of Elohim, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Observe what I have commanded you this day. Behold, I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hit Tites, the Prizites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, take care lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land to which you go, lest it become a snare in your midst. You shall tear down their altars and break their pillars and cut down their ashram. For you shall worship no other god, for Yahweh's name is jealous as a jealous Elohim. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and when they whore after their gods and sacrifice to their gods, and you are invited, you eat of his sacrifice, and you take their daughters for your sons, and their daughters whore after their gods, and make your sons whore after their gods. You shall not make for yourself any gods of cast metal. You shall keep the festival on unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, as I have commanded you. At the, at the time appointed in the month of Abib, for in the month of Abib you came out of Egypt. All that opened the womb are mine. All your males, livestock, the firstborn of cow and sheep, the firstborn of donkey, you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. All the firstborn of your son shall redeem, and none shall appear before me empty-handed. Six days you shall work, but on seventh day you shall rest, in plowing time, and in harvest time you shall rest, you shall observe the feast of weeks, the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Three times in a year you shall... Shall all your males appear before Yahweh Elohim, the Elohim of Israel, for it will cast out nations before you and enlarge your borders. No one shall covet your land when you go up to the, appear before Yahweh your Elohim three times in a year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leavened, or let the sacrifice of the feast of Passover remain until morning. The best of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring to the house of Yahweh your Elohim. You shall not boil young goats in its mother's milk. And Yahweh said to Moses, Write these words, for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with Yahweh forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on a tablet the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with Elohim. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterwards, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them all. That Yahweh had spoken with them on Mount Sinai, and when he had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before Yahweh to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' Moses's face was shining, and Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went to speak with him.
Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Don Elohim, new king of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Don Elohim, you see the words of your Torah in our mouths and the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, Elohim, king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to remind you may be kind to you. May Adonai bless so favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is 1 Kings 18, 1 through 39. After many days, the word of Yahweh came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show yourself to Ahab. And I will send rain upon the earth. So Elijah went to show himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria. And Ahab called Abadiah, who was over the household. Now Abadiah feared Yahweh greatly. And when Jezebel cut off the prophets of Yahweh, Abadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifties in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said to Abadiah, Go through the land to the springs of water and to the, all the valleys. Perhaps we may find grass and save the horses and mules alive, alive and not lose some of the animals. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. Ahab went in one direction by himself, and Abadiah went in the other direction by himself. Abadiah was on the way, and behold, Elijah met him, and Abadiah recognized him. And fell on his face and said, It is you, my lord, Elijah. And he answered him, It is I. Go tell your lord, Behold, Elijah is here. And he said, How have I sinned that you would give your servants into the hand of Ahab to kill me? And as Yahweh your Elohim lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my lord has not sent to seek you. And when they would say, He is not here, he would take an oath of the kingdom or nation. That they had not found you, and now you say, Go, tell your Lord, Behold, Elijah is here. And as soon as I have gone from you, the Spirit of Yahweh will carry you, I know not where. And so, when I come to tell Ahab, and he cannot find you, he will kill me, although your servants have feared Yahweh from my youth. Has it not been told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel killed the prophet of Yahweh. Now I hid a hundred men. How I hid a hundred men of Yahweh's prophets by fifties in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Now you say, Go tell your Lord, behold, Elisha is here and he will kill me. <coughs> and now you say, I'm sorry. And Elijah said, As Yahweh of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely show myself to him today. So Abadiah went to me, meet. Ahab, and told him in Ahab to meet Elijah. And when Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, It is, is it you, you troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have in your father's house, because you have abandoned the commandments of Yahweh and have followed the Baals. Now therefore send a, and gather all Israel to meet at Mount Carmel. And the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Ashra who eat at Jezebel's table. So I have sent to all the people of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Car Carmel. And Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping between two different opinions? If Yahweh is Elohim, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I even, I only, am left a prophet of Yahweh, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let two, let two bulls give to us, and let them choose one bull for themselves, and cut it into pieces, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it. And I will prepare the other bull, and lay it on top of the wood, and put no fire to it. And you can call upon the name of your God, and I will call upon the name of Yahweh. And Elohim who answers by fire, he is Elohim. And all the people answered it is well spoken. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose for yourself one bull and prepare it first. For you are many. 
and call upon the name of your God, but put no fire to it. And they took the bull that was given, and they prepared it, and called upon the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, answer us. And there was no voice, no answer. And no one answered. And they limped around the altar that they had made. And at noon Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, for is a God. Either he is musing, or he is revealing himself, or he is on a journey. Or perhaps he's asleep and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their custom with swords and lances until the blood gushed out upon them. And as midday passed, they raved on until the time of offering of the oblation. And there was no voice. No one answered and no one paid attention. And then Elijah said to the people, Come near to me. And all the people came near to him and he repaired the altar of Yahweh that had been thrown down in. Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of Yahweh came, saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of Yahweh, and he made a trench around the altar, as great as would contain two saves of seed. And he put the wood in the altar, and cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. And he said, Fill four jars with water, and pour it on the burnt offering, and on the wood. And he said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time, and he said, Do it a third time. They did it a third time, and the water ran around the altar and filled the trench also with water. And at that time, sorry, and at the time of the offering of the oblation, Elisha the prophet came there and said, O Lord Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are Elohim and Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, and answer me, that, that this people may know that you O Lord, or Elohim, and that you have turned backs, and that you have turned their hearts back. Sorry. Then the fire of Yahweh fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and all the stones and the dust licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, Yahweh, he is Elohim. Yahweh, he is Elohim. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, or Adonai Elohim, King of the universe, who gives the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver the Torah, Brukata Adonai Elohim, Malach Kalom, Asher Nata, Nur Tereti Met Vaishi Elohim, Nata Beti Kinyu, Brukata Adonai Netin Atara. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say your blessing. Blessed art thou, Don Eli, new king in the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross himself with the words of Torah. Please, Don Eli, he knew, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and the mouths of all your people of Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah, which is fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, Elohim, king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten me and be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is... Ezekiel 36, 16 through 38. The word of Yahweh came to me, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and their deeds. Their ways before me were like the uncleanliness of a woman in her menstrual impurity. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed in the land, for the idols of which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed throughout the countries. In accordance with their ways and their deeds, I judged them. But when it came to the nations, Wherever they came, they profaned my holy name, and that people said of them, These are the people of Yahweh, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord Elohim, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. 
And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am Yahweh, declares the Lord Elohim. When through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. And you shall dwell in the land that I give to your fathers. And you shall be my people and I will be your Elohim. And I'll deliver you from all the uncleanliness, the uncleanness. And I will summon the grain and make it abundant and lay no famine upon you. I will make fruit. Make the fruit of the trees and increase the field abundant, that you may never again suffer the di disgrace of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good, and you will loathe yourselves from the iniquities and your abominations. It is not for your sake that I will act, declares Lord Elohim. Let that be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord Elohim, On a day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will cause the cities to be inhabited, and the wasted, sorry, and the waste places shall be rebuilt, and the land that will be desolate will shall be tilled. Instead of being the desolation that it was in the sight of all who passed by, and they will say this land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations that are left all around you shall know that I am Yahweh. I have rebuilt the ruined places and replanted that which was desolate. I am Yahweh. I have spoken, and I will do it. Thus says the Lord Elohim, This is also I will let the house of Israel ask me to do for them, to increase their people like a flock, like the flock for sacrifices, like a flock at Jerusalem during the appointed feasts. So shall the what does this? So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of people, and they will know that I am Yahweh. Blessed art thou, Don Elohim, King of the universe, who chose us, sorry, who gave us the Torah of truth and everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Don I give her the Torah, Bukata Don Elohim, Malach Alom, Asna, Nata, Lenu, Tredi, Met, Vaishi, Elom, Nata, Bet, Kenyu, Bukata, Don Anatina, Tra. Hello all, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with His commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you speak the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people as usual. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations, and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai. Give her the Torah. May Donah bless you and keep watch over you. May Donah make his presence to you. May be kind to you. May Donah bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Our first read today is Matthew 9, 35 through 11, 1. And Yeshua went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. <laughs> me. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over the unclean spirits to cast them out and heal every disease and every affliction. The name of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon 
who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Yeshua sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, enter no town of the S Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and pro proclaim as you say, as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts. No bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff for the laborer deserves his food. In whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Saddam and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents, and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. They will deliver you over. Do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and a father his child and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures that to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant to be like his master. If they are, have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, for him who can destroy both soul and body in hell, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even if the hairs on your head are all numbered, fear not, so therefore you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a sudden, uh, and a sudden, a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever fi finds his life will be will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever goes Whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. When Yeshua had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. Luke eleven fourteen through 20 Now he was casting out a demon that was mute. 
And when the demon had gone out, the man, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said he cast out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, while others to test him kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But knowing, but he, knowing their thoughts, said to him, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of Elohim that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of Elohim has come upon you. <laughs> Blessed art thou, Donai Elohim, you king of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Donai, give us the Torah, Brukotad, Donai Elohim, Malach, Allah, Mashin, Torah, the new Torah, the Met, by she, alone, the Tabet, can you Brukotad, Donai, and Tinatra. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Donai Elohim, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Donai Elohim, you sing the words of your Torah in our mouths and the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house Israel. May we all together know your name and study your Torah for sake fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, you king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, give us the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. We have a three reads today. Oops. Making the camera. Acts 7, 35, 8. Uh, 35 through 8, 1 is our first one. Then this Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? This man Elohim sent as both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out, performing wonders and signs in Egypt and at the Red Sea in the wilderness for forty years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, Elohim will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. This is... This is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our fathers. He received living oracles to give to us. Our father, our fathers refused to obey him, but thrust him aside, and in their hearts they turned to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us gods who will go before us. And for this, Moses, who led us out, from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered a sacrifice to the idol, and were rejoicing in the works of their hands. But Elohim turned away and gave them over to worship the hosts of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring to me slain beasts and sacrifices during the forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You took up the tent of Malak. And the star of your God, Raphan. The image that you made to worship. And I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Our father had the tent of the wilderness in the wilderness. Just as he who spoke to Moses directed him to make it. According to the pattern that he had seen, our fathers in turn brought it in with Joshua when they this possessed nation at Elohim drove out before our fathers. So it was until the days of David, who found favor in the sight of Elohim and asked to find a dwelling place for the Elohim of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in the houses made by hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? 
or what is the place of my rest? Do not my hand make all these things? Sorry, did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised and hardened ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your father, fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. <coughs> now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they grounded they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of Elohim, and Yeshua ascending at the right hand of Elohim, and he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of Elohim. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. In the wilderness laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Yeshua, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 13. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our father, our fathers were all under the cloud, all passing through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual food. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Hamashiach, nevertheless. With most of them Elohim was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them, oh, as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. In the twenty-three house. The 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Hamashiach to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. Nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example. But they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No, tempta no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Elohim is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape you, you may, that you may be able to endure it. 2 Corinthians 3, 1-18 Are we beginning to commend ourselves again, or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are a letter of recommendation written on our hearts to be known and ready by all. Sorry, read by all. And you show that you are le you are a letter from Hamashiach delivered by us, written not with the ink but with the spirit of the living Elohim, not on tablets of stone but on the tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Hamashiach toward Elohim, not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from Elohim, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now if the ministry of death carved in letters on stone came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory which was being brought to an end. Will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. Indeed, in this case, what once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. For, in, for if what was being brought to an end and came 
with glory much more will what is permanent have glory. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened, for to this day when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted because only through Hamashiach is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is in the Spirit. Is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, behold, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is in spirit. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, King of the universe, who gave the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Bruka ta Adonai Elohim, Malach Halom, Ashenatal, the new Torah, Matt Baishi, Lom, Natal Betta, Kenyu, Bruka ta Adonai, Natina Torah.